Hey guys, welcome back to the video. I, first of all, I want to thank all of you guys. We are reaching 60,000 subscribers. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Triumph Tiger. I'm a big fan of Triumph. I've had two Triumphs. I had a Speed Triple and a Triumph Tiger from 1998. And the Tiger, it's a beautiful bike. I really love the steamer look and I even like the girly look. Now, I am a little bit more critical about the new direction of the Triumph Tiger. They look kind of like BMW F800 replicas. The new ones now in 2023, 2024, they're starting to have a little bit more character, a little bit more distinct character from the previous generations. And there is also some confusion with the Tiger 1050. That bike doesn't even seem like it should be in the lineup. It kind of goes back with the Triumph Heritage. They made so many different versions of the Tiger. And you'll find out that they even made a Tiger scooter named the Tigeress. So that's a Triumph thing. They'll just put everything into the Tiger umbrella. And it doesn't really matter if it's a off-road dual sport, but they'll combine it with something that looks like the FJ09 from Yamaha, which is the 1050. And I know I am a little critical of the new Triumph Tigers, mainly because they don't have as much character as I hoped. And, but they are brilliant bikes. Uh, I've ridden the new Tigers, they're, they're great. Great power, they're, they have all the stuff that everybody wants. Um, I heard some reliability issues, but in my case, there wasn't that many reliability issues. Uh, I know that the 955 engine from Triumph is really good, but the newer ones, I can't really say because I have not owned one. But I had 74,000 miles on my Speed Triple. I rode that thing just everywhere, never let me down. And I did read some of the reliability reports from Consumer Reports, and they do put Triumph high up there with Harley, which is kind of amazing, but that's not been my experience. This is the video that I made about the history of the Triumph Tiger. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're new here, give me a like and a subscribe, and thank you for watching. The Triumph Tiger is important to the world of motorcycles for several reasons. First, it has a long storied history that spans several decades, making it an important part of motorcycle culture. The Tiger has proven to be versatile and a reliable machine that can handle a variety of riding conditions, from city streets to rugged off-road trails. The Triumph Tiger represents the ongoing evolution of the motorcycle industry. As manufacturers strive to create machines that are both technological advanced and aesthetically pleasing, as motorcycles continue to evolve and change, it is likely that the Triumph Tiger will remain an important part of the conversation, thanks to its rich history and reputation for quality and performance. The Tiger name goes back all the way to the 1930s, but even with that lineage, Triumph made more than just motorcycles. They even made a scooter named the Tigress. They had a complete lineup of Tigers, the 70, the 80, the 90, the 100, the Tigress, the Tiger Cub, the Tiger Cub Racer, the Tiger Cub Woods, the Tiger Special, and others. I've always been a fan of the Tiger, and for me, it was the Paris the Car styling of the steamer that did it for me. But now, the Tiger is coming back with the new adventure styling. With the overly saturated adventure market, how does the Triumph Tiger fare? Honda brought back the Africa Twin, Yamaha brought back the Super Tenere, and the Tenere. BMW has several offerings of their GS lineup. Monoguzi's got their V85, Suzuki's got the V-Strom. This is the story of the Triumph Tiger. The Tiger Insignia was created by the visionary design chief, Edward Turner, in 1936. This emblem has come to embody the spirit of adventure, speed, and power that Triumph stands for. 
You can read more about Edward Turner in the official biography by Jeff Clue. Turner joined the Merchant Navy by the age of 16 and quickly became a Marconi wireless telegraph officer. By 1925, he had designed his first motorcycle engine. By 1927, he built his first Turner special motorcycle. In 1928, he was hired by Ariel Motorcycles. By 1932, he became the technical director of what is now known as Triumph Engineering Company. In 1960, Turner went to Japan to gather intelligence on the growing motorcycle Japanese industry. They had the Tiger 70, the Tiger 80, the Tiger 90, and they even had a scooter, the Tigris. They made several versions of the Tiger in different configurations. Triumph launched the Tiger T100 that featured a 498 air-cooled parallel twin engine that was in the previous year speed twin model. There was a lag of production from 1939 until 1946 when the Triumph Coventry facility was destroyed in World War II. From 1953 to 1961, the Tiger 110 with its 650cc engine was offered along with the T-100. The final year of the T-100 was in 1983 when the company stopped production motorcycles in Meriden, England in 1983 due to financial difficulties and labor disputes. At the time, Triumph was facing increasing competition from the Japanese motorcycle manufacturers and was struggling to keep up with the changing market. The company was also facing labor problems as workers at the Meriden factory went on strike, leading to production delays and additional financial difficulties. In an effort to save the company, the government stepped in and arranged for the formation of a workers' co-op which took over the factory. However, the co-op was unable to turn the company around and the production of motorcycles at the Meriden factory finally came to a halt in 1983. Triumph's motorcycle production was later relocated to Hinckley, England, where it continues to this day. Real estate tycoon John Blur revived the Triumph brand, and in 1993, the new Triumph Tiger was reborn. The Tiger 900, also known as the Steamer, was an 885cc three-cylinder engine. Michael Locke, Triumph's international marketing manager, looked at dual-sport flops at the time. Kajiva and the Japanese manufacturers had a hard time selling adventure bikes. Only the BMW GS was a financial success. Locke goes on, quote, Our other bikes are more conventional and easily understood. The Tiger has to be demonstrated. People look at it and immediately form an opinion. It's a bit of a chicken or egg situation. You have to remember that in the early 90s, motorcycle buyers were not yet looking for dual sports. They were not looking for bikes that could crush forest roads and at the same time keep up with sport bikes in the twisties. They were looking for specific motorcycles, for sport bikes, for dirt bikes, for cruisers, but they didn't have much of a use for bikes that could do it all. This was especially true for the American market. In Europe, with the Paris Dakar, big dual sports like the Africa Twin and the Yamaha Tenere gained popularity. They were big, powerful, carried a lot of road presence, could cope with the hazardous villages of Europe, could do touring, and were simply perfect for everyday commuters. By 1995, Triumph was already known in the bike world. They had nine three- and four-cylinder road bikes, but they had another bike, the Tiger, which was much less popular. In the early 90s, bikes were not marketed as adventure bikes. They were simply called big trailies or dual sports. So there wasn't much of a demand for an extremely large dual sport because people thought that you had to go off-road on them. And in the early 90s, Triumph didn't sell many of the Tigers. It had a very distinct styling. It looked like a Paris Dakar replica, and for that same reason, it was extremely very heavy bike. But something about this bike makes it one of the coolest looking motorcycles of the entire 90s. 
and it's extremely rare. It's so difficult to find these days. This represented the best of the big trailies, large, powerful, stable, and beautiful. And it proved to be a great commuter, but had quite a few issues with quality. It's funny to look back, and there are some great travelogues by riders that rode a steamer across the entire world. One is by Dag Jensen and his wife, on the back of their motorcycle, Rosinant. In the early 90s, dual sports only represented 6% of the motorcycle buying public. Now, adventure bikes are the norm and they're the growing segment. As typical of these bikes, the steamer was a great bike for everyday riding. It had plenty of torque, had enough speed for everyday conditions. It had a 19 inch front wheel, 17 rear, which was perfect for a touring machine. Cycle World in 1995 said about the Tiger. The Tiger is much more than a practical user-friendly commuter. It's a two-up tourer, a light-duty dirt bike, and a Sunday morning back road blitzer, and a go-anywhere street bike without limits. To put simply, it resisted neat classification. It took Triumph less than two years to design the first Tiger, the Steamer, because of the modularity it had with the other Triumphs. An interesting Tiger that was made by Carlo Talamo, the importer of Triumph in Italy from 1992 to 2002, he made a Tiger in a special green livery that replaced the Tiger logo on the side with Triumph. That was one of the questions with the steamer. Why the too large in the side of the tank and not emphasize the word Triumph? That was corrected later on. But to me, I like the Tiger on the side. It gives it a lot of character. 1998 was the last year of this iconic motorcycle. It was the last of the carbureted Tiger. The Triumph Tiger from 1999 to 2000. This was beginning of the new fuel injection system for the Tiger. It was showcased in the Munich show in 1998. They removed the large font of the Tiger and added striped patterns to the tank with the smaller font of Tiger. Competition for the Tiger at the time was the Honda Veradero, the Africa Twin, the Yamaha TDM and Tenere, in the Kajiva Grand Canyon. The steamer had angular styling. This new bike was cartoony. It was fun. It was completely different than the previous generation. It looked like Triumph abandoned a marketing team for another one. No other bike looks like this even today. It was bold styling. And it was either you loved it or hated it. The only thing that it resembled was the old Tiger was the two round headlights. The symmetrical exhaust was gone, replaced with one single can on the right side. And if you got panniers, the panniers were molded to fit the exhaust. For 2000, the Tiger remained unchanged, except for the new Sagem MC1000 control unit, which was more compact and lighter. And they added a new color, Eclipse Blue. No. The evolution from 1999 to 2000 evolved from an 855cc to 955i. This was a more powerful power plant, but the bikes still resembled each other. This Tiger used a speed triple 955 engine modified for low end torque and power. It handled better due to the improvements to the suspension and refinements throughout the chassis. It had increased stability thanks to the new 43mm fork and the bike is up 16 horsepower and an increase in 70cc displacement. It made 104 horsepower, making it one of the most powerful machines in its enduro class. 72 pounds of torque at 6200. The 04 was more road oriented. It was a much better road bike. They also added British racing green to the lineup colors. In 2006, it was the last production for the girly tigers. Triumph took a swan dive into a style that had everyone scratching their heads. 
wondering if they accidentally stumbled into a parallel universe of motorcycle aesthetics. Personally, I'm torn between the charm of the early 90s and the oh sophisticated girly tigers. But look, there's something enchanting about this lime green oddity that Triumph created in 2001. In a sea of bikes trying to blend in and court the same buyers, the Triumph Tiger stands out like a sore thumb, and I absolutely love it. The styling, utterly unapologetic and quintessentially British. Because who needs subtlety when you can have a lime green Triumph Tiger with stripes? Look, sure, these early Tigers are as rare as a unicorn sighting, but fear not, the 955 engine is here to save the day. And it's got tons of reliability that makes other engines question their life choices. You have to admire Triumph for taking such a bold style on the Triumph Tiger. No one could do this. No one could get away with creating a bike like this. It's so different, so interesting. It's uniquely British, as sipping tea in the rain. This new Tiger was a complete redesign. Since the old girly Tigers, it didn't resemble a dual sport or a enduro bike or an adventure bike. It looked like a street bike, an upright street bike. It looked more of a Hornet than a Tiger, and it has styling of a Yamaha Phaser in it as well. This new Tiger for Triumph was a big sales success. In 2006, there were several sketches released. In the new concepts, you could see upside down forks and a bike that resembled the Daytona 675. It started in August 2003 when Triumph asked for the collaboration of three different agencies for new lines of a new bike. Two months later in Rome and Milan, proposals were analyzed. This new design was in collaboration with Marabizi Design. This Tiger might be the blandest of all Tigers, but perhaps one of the most important for Triumph. They used marketing data to analyze what people wanted in bikes at the time and redesigned the bike to match those needs. At the same time, I feel they lost a bit of the character the Tiger had. It looked like a soft supermotor rather than a dual sport or aspiring adventure bike. It was technically a success, and it ran until 2012. Most Tiger owners were confused by the direction of this new Tiger. They went from a dual sport bike, from the 900 to the girly Tigers, to the 1050, and the 1050 was a road bike. The Tiger 1050 was a collab between designer Rodolfo Frascoli. The 1050 was one of the most popular models for Triumph. Coming from a quirky and strange models of the girlies and the steamers, this hornet-shaped powerful bike moved away from the enduro and more into a sport touring machine with 17-inch wheels. It was a rational bike for rational people, more in line with contemporary bikes such as the FJ09 from Yamaha. It showed a segment of riders who shied away from Triumphs that Triumph was here to stay and was more competitive with the Japanese powerhouses. When they first started researching the Triumph Tiger, looks-wise, I hated the 1050. But as I learned more and more about the history, I realized that this was one of the better Tigers for most riders. It gets everything most riders want. Agility, handling, a great motor, capable of stretching roads with the best of sport bikes, but it didn't have that pedigree of adventure. Riders aren't drawn to motorcycles by cold, rational logic. It's the emotional pull, the connection with the bike that seals the deal. Adventure bikes thrive on this sentiment. It's not about embarking on epic journeys. It's about the feeling, the illusion of transversing uncharted territories. The Tiger 1050 achieved significant success, but it seemed like Triumph might have strayed a bit from its foundational essence in the pursuit of boosting sales. Starting in 2012, the Triumph Tiger underwent a transformation that was somewhat 
anticipated. Faced with the dominance of BMW in the adventure market, Triumph shifted its focus away from the traditional British style, embracing elements of BMW's distinctive and unconventional design. As I set out to create this video, my excitement initially was fueled by the early years of the Triumph Tiger. However, what became apparent was the post the 1050 model, the Tiger took a completely different path, drawing inspiration from the distinctive style championed by BMW. While this shift may align with some elements of the BMW aesthetic, it's worth acknowledging that Triumph's endeavor to infuse its own uniqueness into the mix, presenting a Tiger that stood out amidst the crowd of similar style motorcycles. The latest Tigers boast impressive attributes. They're lighter, they're more reliable, they're loaded with new features. However, I'll admit, they leave me yearning for something more. There's a certain intangible quality, a soul, a spirit that older ones possess and the new ones seem to lack. It's what the French describe as je ne sais quoi, that elusive, indescribable essence that's notably absent in the newer models. Triumph's new lineup up to 2012 is confusing if you're not a Triumph Tiger connoisseur. But I'll give you a rundown of some of the models. They had the Tiger 800, and it had special editions with XR and XC variants. They had the Tiger Sport. The Sport is still derived from the extremely popular 1050. It's a sporty Yamaha FJ09 Tracer Sport Touring type of machine. And then they have the Tiger 1200 Explorer. That's their largest Tiger with a shaft drive. Recently, they have a Tiger 900, the 900 replaced the old 800. Now makers are keen to change the displacement number when they make a new model because that keeps buyers to upgrade more often. These revamped 2012 Triumph Tigers present a much improved aesthetic. However, they still bear a resemblance to the BMW F800s crossed with a Ducati Multistrada. I understand I might be in the minority with these sentiments, but motorcycles, in my perspective, aren't always about rationality. Aesthetics play a significant role for me, as do the feel of them. In conclusion, the Tiger serves as a compelling alternative to the ever-popular BMW GS, often hailed as the GOAT in the adventure touring realm. While my heart may lean towards the older Tigers, the new ones wouldn't be unwelcomed from a technical standpoint. They surpass their predecessors in many aspects. As we wrap up this journey through the evolution of the Tiger, from the early 90s steamers to the more recent Tiger 1200, it's clear how Triumph has adapted to changing times and rider preferences. My personal affection lies with the early Tigers, each carrying a unique charm. But here's a playful thought. I miss the Tigers and the girlies. There's a missing link, the Tigress. Triumph, when can we expect a Tigress scooter to join the lineup? Now, that would be a delightful addition. That was the history of the Triumph Tiger in a nutshell. If you go back to the 70s, 80s, there's so much history on these British bikes. Triumph made a huge comeback. It came back from the dead and it's now everywhere. People love Triumphs and for good reason. It's almost like an exotic motorcycle without the crazy unreliable quirks of a European maker. So in a, that way, it makes complete sense. It's as if you're riding something completely unique and new. It, especially if you're coming from a Japanese bike, you'll understand it a little bit more than buying like a Ducati or BMW. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. It really helps out the algorithm and I'll see you in the next video.